Hello everyone, happy Tuesday. I hope you guys are having a great day so far. I have just tried to drop some links into the comment section and I'm not sure I got it to work successfully. So hopefully you guys are able to click on some of the links. The first link should be for the flower patch pot and then the creative expressions for some reason decided to go as a separate message and it should be the second link that everyone sees. So today I'm going to be featuring two products. I'll let you know the SKUs just in case you guys can't click the links. And then I've also got a couple little demos as well. I'm going to show you guys. So we might as well just jump right into it. I'm going to flip my camera over. It's a little bit crooked, so we will have to fix that up. <laughs> um, let's just straighten that out. So that way you guys aren't looking a little lopsided. So these are some of the flower patch pot cards that I've created. Um, I'm going to go through the kit and explain the cards here in a second, and then we'll build one together. Um, so in the kit, this is already opened. I just opened it up so everyone can see the contents inside. You get all of the envelopes that fit all of your cards into. So you've got enough for how many it gives you to build. So that way you can ship them in the mail nice and easy. So we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of the envelopes. And then I'll move this aside and I'll explain this in just a second. If I can, there we go, pick it up. <laughs> then you get two of each flower pot. So there are two here. These are all pre-die cuts. They just pop out super easily. You can see those lines on the back. They are all pre-die cuts. They pop out. Um, so that's one flower pot. And then we've got another style here. And what I really like is at the bottom, it gives you some examples of how you can build your flower pot. So you could do reverse, where you got your white base and the colorful lip, or vice versa, where you got the um, patterned base and the white lip. So we've got that. I got two of those. Got two of these ones. And you can always mix and match as well the flower pots with the flowers. And then the last one here. And then it comes with, um, so there's two of each flower pots, but then it comes with three of these. So that's what I was wanting to show you. It comes with three. You really only need two, um, but they give you a third sheet. So that way you can add more if you want more full of a bouquet, if you want to add more 3D layers to make it pop a bit more. Um, so it gives you a lot of additional pieces. You get three of these. You only need two, but the third one is perfect to add any finishing touches. Maybe you missed a spot or you want to 3D of flower a bit more. So it comes with all three of the flowers for the flower pots. And then it also comes with way more sentiments than you need. Um, so you've got happy birthday just for you, special birthday, birthday wishes, birthday boy, special friend, sent with love, best wishes. And you get them in all different fonts and different colors. And they are all, the rims are kind of foiled with, or the edges, I guess, are foiled with um, gold super pretty and then one of my favorite parts is on the front it gives you the inspiration of what your finished card would look like but on the back it also has photo step-by-step -step instructions which makes it so easy to put together and we will put it together now so i have already popped my flower pot out because I didn't realize I this was my last one. So <laughs> this would come out of, I've thrown it out. I've been uh, messing with these, as you guys saw. It would come in here, and then you would just pop it out. I had to kind of take mine apart because I started building it and then realized, oh, I should build it on camera. So again, this just pops out. It's all pre-scored, so you just literally fold it. I added some foam pads, and then all you do is you just fold it over super easy. You can use tape or 3D foam strips for this. Um, it's really up to you. I like to use the foam strips just because I find it makes it a little bit easier to take the um, flower in and out. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. So we'll start building this here. I left my favorite scissors in a different area. I usually use my Studio Light scissors which are my go-tos. And I'm just lining it right along the edge. You can use glue as well if you want to. I just think that the 3D foam pads and tape work better just because the glue would spread too much, I think. And then all you do is you just fold it. 
and then put some pressure down and then you've got your flower pot um, you can leave it like this and put it on a base of a card like I did or you can take the tail which where did I put that oh it's over here these are the other pieces that just pop out so these all would have come like such just with the different pattern and then they all just pop out super easily and then you've got your inspiration at the bottom and then I'm going to use tape for this one. I'm going to fold. You can see there is a score line. So I'm just going to fold that. And then I'm going to take some tape. Just put this along the back. And the reason I'm using tape is because I don't need 3D foam pads. And one little tip that I found while putting this on the back was not to put it right down to the base because it makes it a little bit harder for it to tilt up and stand. I find if you kind of put it more in the exact middle, so there's a little bit of space on the bottom, you don't want it right at the bottom. Just lift it up a little bit, but make sure that the top isn't um, sticking up over well, over top. So there we go. We've got your little base Then it stands up. As you can see, my other ones have that as well. Just stand them up nicely. This is one I put right to the base and uh, you'll notice it falls over a little bit easier. It was from trial and error. I learned that the hard way and then my next one's like, oh, let's make some space. So that one stands up much easier. All right, so that is that part. Now let's get to building the flower. So I like to use um, the more empty space to build my flowers because I don't want to cover this lovely image here. So I'm going to do the purple or pink flowers. This is my third sheet that I'm actually using. You can use if you've got, if you're done with all the flower pots and you have additional flower pieces, you can always just make a flower card as it is. You don't need to put it into a pot or anything, which I love because I've got extra ones here that I can use to decorate some other projects. It doesn't have to be on this flower pot. And I'm going to start building my, I was, you know what, maybe we'll do, we'll do the flowers. We'll do the pink flowers. I'm very indecisive. <laughs> As you guys know, you guys have been watching me for a while. I always flip flop what I'm doing with my craft designs as I'm crafting. And sometimes I take apart my crafts. Okay, I'm just going to stick some 3D foam pads onto that. And I've just got some like medium sized ones here. And I'm not going to go too crazy with the foam pads because I want when this is going down. Oops. I want it to hang over the edge a bit. So once that's in all the way, I want it to hang over the edge. So I don't want foam pads all the way to the base. So what I'm actually going to do is use that as a guide. Leave that in there. I'm gonna take these off and I'm going to just place it here. That looks good to me. Now I'll take my next big piece and same thing. I'm gonna focus them in the middle and not too many foam pads. I usually like to go crazy with foam pads, but I have to uh, make myself not go too crazy with these. And I'm just going to make sure I get all of the edges covered. Don't want any corners sticking through. So that's what it looks like so far. I know it might look a little bit funny, but wait. <laughs> I've got some flowers here that I've already put three foam pads on, so I'm gonna use those. And I'm going to stick that not there I'm gonna maneuver it around to what makes the most sense to me that looks good then I've got an empty space here and I don't like that there I'm going to use this 3d where does this one belong there we go nope that doesn't go there this goes right there if I can stick it down without sticking my finger. There we go. Then I've got some more flowers here. I'm going to take the small little one here. And I'm going to take one of these teeny little flowers as well. And I'm just going to put some foam pads on the back. And I'm going to hide this little white space there. I'm going to tuck this right underneath. And again, that is why I said you don't want too many foam pads because you're going to want to stick things underneath like that. And I'm going to take a smaller foam square. Use my handy dandy studio light little hook. Love this thing. 
There we go. And just add that. That is too big, but you guys will get the idea. One thing I do, which I don't know if it's really that permanent, I use my nails and I'll just bend and fold sometimes the foam pads if they're sticking out. I'll just hide that spot underneath of the flower. There, perfect. All right, so then I could keep going and add some more layers. So maybe I will, I'll add some 3D here. So I'll put one more on and then you guys will get the idea. Don't need to keep going. Hello, Lisa. Hello, Linda. Sorry, I'm still looking up now. I'm getting carried away in my crafts. <laughs> I hope you guys are doing well. I know Lisa had a fun weekend. <laughs> um, all right, so there we go. And I think that's good. We could always add more because there are more layers. As you can see, there's a couple more left over, but that's good enough for now. So that is done. And then what we can do is add this little additional piece on. We can add it to the base. We can add it across the top here. Or we could even add it into the flowers like that and add a little sentiment. Um, and for that, that's what I mean here. So you just stick it out and trim it down a little bit. And then you've got your sentiment. And then it comes in and out still, which is nice. So we will add the sentiment, I think, onto the base. I'm thinking, let me see. You know, I like to manipulate things as I'm crafting. Hmm. Maybe we will do it on that. <laughs> I keep changing my mind. And we'll do a scent with love. These are perfect for Mother's Day. Um, also Valentine's Day, because it's like you're giving someone a bouquet of flowers. I'm going to do it up top here. Um, and I'm going to use a bit of glue, which here it is. But yeah, these are good for birthdays, Valentine's Day, Mother's Day. This would also be good for a wedding. Like, there's just so many um, different, like, themes and seasons and stuff that this card could be used for, which I love. And it is so much fun, just the fact that you can pull it in and out of the pot or have it just as the pot standing up. So we could just have the pot standing up which would be super adorable for matching on base. And then I am going to 3D this um, just because I find it adds a bit dimension and I love 3D foam pads. <laughs> These are my go-tos. All right. And then this I will stick down here. I like it there more. All right, so that is basically the card done. You could do it like that. You could always add more. I uh, wish I had seen this from the start. I love this idea. I know they are so adorable. Like there's so many different ways of working with them. You can really change it up by just switching the flower pots from like reverse, or you can add the sentiment into the flowers or onto the base or have it as just a card like this or put it on a base itself. So many different options. So anyway, I'll just go through and show you guys all of the cards. And then I've got some more stuff to show. So again, this is just one way of different ideas for some inspiration. I added some little gems to the bottom of the little ruffles, which I think was super cute. You can also mix and match all the flowers together. So you could build like a really colorful bouquet. And then I always like to add sparkle, obviously. <laughs> I love my sparkles. So I've got some sparkles on some of the flowers and on some of the pots as well. Like this one has some sparkle here as well at the bottom. All right, so that is the flower pot, uh, flower patch pot card. So it's a full kit, comes with everything. It's really easy and quick to make and a lot of fun. And uh, look at how stunning they are. They're so beautiful. I love these. Um, and the skew for this is 17 dash. 1075 FPP. If you are curious, that is the skew. If I can get it on camera, I'm struggling here. There we go. <laughs> All right. Now, moving along, we've got, I'm going to show a couple more Katie Sue, and then I have a demo that I had mentioned last week on my live that I didn't get a chance to do. So we'll do that today. So that was the flower patch pot kits. Now, Moving along to Easter a little bit quickly. Um, these have also just arrived. These are three brand new Katie Sue 
um, sheets. So these come with, I think there's three in there. Yeah, it looks like there's three in each. Um, these are so adorable and perfect for Easter. I wish the lighting in here was a little bit better so you guys could see how stunning these actually are. But I know, they're so cute, June. So we've got some, these are also can make two cards on this sheet. So these are two separate cards here. So really you get to make about six cards total. So there's one. Here's another adorable one. I love this. It's not even specifically Easter um, because it's got the flowers. It's just beautiful images as is. <laughs> and then same with this one. It's not necessarily Easter. There are um, some Easter sentiments down here. Happy Easter, Easter blessings, sending birthday wishes. But like this, again, would be perfect for Mother's Day because it's got flowers. Just perfect for the springtime. I thought they were adorable. I really wanted to make a card with them, but I'm not going to take any inventory from stock today. Maybe soon once I buy one myself for Easter, but they are so adorable. I just wanted to show you guys those quickly. All right. Now, demo. Last little demo for you guys. So if you guys remember last week, I showed you guys this die and I didn't get a chance to figure it out to build on camera with you guys. So all I did was I die cut everything twice. There are a few things you don't necessarily need to die cut twice, like the eyebrows and this piece, um, but everything else you die cut twice. So I will build this quickly on camera to show you guys how easy it is. It is also so adorable. So I just wanted to show you guys. Just separating all my pieces here. All right, so first I'm going to start off with my little base. Um, it does come like pre-scored. It's got all, I'm not pre-scored. Once you die cut it, it's got score lines on it. So all you do is you just literally fold where the lines are. And since it's scored, it makes it super easy. So I'm just gonna fold those. And then you can use tape or glue, but I'm just gonna use glue because it's a little bit easier. And I like to do it on the inside. So put my things on the insides like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of glue to, oops, if I take the lid off, that would be helpful. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have ever done that. Closed your lid or closed your glue before and you're squeezing and not understanding why nothing's coming out. I have done that too many times. <laughs> All right, and then I'm just putting that there and then I'm just going to squeeze it until it dries enough that I can let go. This is the Sticky Multi Glue from Art by Marlene. Um, you guys probably saw me use this last week too. I love it. It comes in this like with a tiny nozzle. I have never had an issue with it drying up and it works great. Like that was pretty quick. Usually I'm still holding my pieces together with other glue. So it just needs a tiny little bit. You don't need that much. Same thing, I'm sticking this on the inside. And then I'm just going to squeeze it until it dries enough. Sorry, I keep moving my hands off camera. So just squeeze it until it dries. And I'm gonna wipe up if there's any excess glue. All right, so that is good enough for now. It's still gonna be drying a little bit, but that's okay. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the belly. So this is the belly of the owl. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to glue. This is going to cover up the base here at the bottom and then a little bit here. So I'm just putting a bit of glue there, centering it. And I will actually show you two ways of working or doing this. So I had a sample. Don't remember what I did with it. I should have grabbed that, but it's okay. You guys got to see me make my sample. So put that there and then I'm going to put the hands over top of the owl but you can also put them behind. And I think I'll show that after as well. So here's one hand, just gonna let that dry. And then the next hand. And then I'm just gonna make sure that my head looks good there with the hand placement. Okay, now I'm just going to attach my head. I'm just adding a bit of glue here. And I am going to add just a little bit more further down. All right. Try and get that on as straight as possible. <laughs> I'm not always the straightest with applying things, especially with rectangles and adding my layering pieces. I always go crooked, but no one ever notices. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's good. Sorry, I thought I forgot something. 
Okay, so that's one way of doing it with the hands. I'll show you the other way. So I'm gonna put the hands down first. So this would make the hands kind of look like they're behind the owl's stomach or in front. So I will show you the difference. Oops, stick that there. Take the other one. I'm doing it the right way. Yeah, that looks so good. I'm, I'm going to have to twist that in a little bit. And again, that's why I like using glues because you can maneuver it still. It <laughs> gives you some play time. All right. And then I'm going to glue just on the edge here, here, and along the bottom. And I'm going to put just a little bit down there because I'm missing a bit. All right. And then put that down. And then I'm going to squeeze it again, just because I find squeezing it really helps it quicker. <laughs> All right, almost done. And then we will add the head on. So I've got about that much, I would say. Ooh, a little bit more. Oh, that was a pretty good guess on the inside. You can't see too much glue. <laughs> and then again, I'm just gonna squeeze that to dry. Probably should have done the face first, but that's okay. So let's do, this could be the back of the owl because its arms are kind of in front of its back. And this will be the front where the owl's hands are in front of its stomach. So this will be the front. I'm gonna build my eyes quickly. These are two eyes and then these are also part of the eyes here. So I did have to die cut these twice. And then just center that, oops, <laughs> to the best of your ability. And these are so adorable. I did see a sample of someone with a heart in the, like in their hands on the right here. Um, these would be perfect for if anyone does like little Valentine's Day trinkets. Stick that, and I always use my other one as a, um, guide even though it's not got any glue on it just to see where I want everything so that looks good there let that dry my second one and that hopefully I've got enough glue on that all right and then my little eyeballs just putting a teeny tiny little bit of glue Okay, do I want the eyeballs? I want it this way. Put them right in the center. And I'll use my tweezers for this one. This one's gonna be hard to pick up. All right, there we have that. Oh, my eyeball moved a little bit. Got some wonky eyes. That is okay. Um, now we'll do the Eyebrows, let's do the eyebrows next. All right, do this one here. I applied a little bit too much glue, but that's okay. It'll dry clear. And then I like to make sure that I'm at least gluing right to the tip of here because it will lift up a little bit. And hold that. And then last is the nose. So lastly, I'll just add the nose on and do it that way. All right. So that is the little owl. As you see, it was super adorable and fun to make. You can do this with really any color. And then you could even add like a little um, clasp here to make it a little gift bag because there's a little box inside. So you could put like, it's a perfect little size for here in Canada, Smarties. <laughs> in the States, you guys don't have Smarties, but um, this would be perfect for that. Or if you've got rockets, you could put little rockets or a little candy in here, um, little sucker or something, and then just like glue the top together or even attach two pieces of ribbon and tie it. Or you could do a little button closure but I think that would be so adorable just to put little treats in here. And maybe if you've got a heart, add a heart here. I don't have a heart, unfortunately. 
um but that would be super adorable if i did <laughs> but yeah that's the little owl i think he's adorable all right so that was that i just wanted to show you guys since it looks a little bit more difficult than it actually is this is sd295 if you are curious and want to get one um, and then lastly, I forgot I had this. I wanted to show this off quickly. Uh, we only have a couple of these left, and I did samples with these recently. This is the Penelope layering die. It is CED9511. So I'll show you the die. It comes with all these different layering pieces. And I have created such beautiful things out of these. My mom actually did this one. She created like a little card. And then this is another one that she did, just like different ways of working with the cards. And then this is one using every single piece. There's just so many like different ways of working with these. There's another little card. You can stamp on them. Like this one, you can stamp on the center. And there's so many different pieces. Like I've cut so many. Like you could do a stamped image and then create a little frame with the dies in blue. So there's a little blue frame. Um, you can do like this, which is super adorable. I had another really nice sample, but I forgot to grab it. I always forget things when I jump on. <laughs> and then you can even put white behind it. So you got white, blue, and the black. Oh, it's a little washed out. That's not showing up too well. I'll show you a better, better version if I've got the pieces. Here's blue. Blue will pop nicely. So you got white, blue, and then you could do the black over top. And then you could even add more layering pieces. You could add white to the center, or you could add, let's see. I've got, oops, I'm just throwing pieces over. Oh, with the vellum. This is one of my favorites. But the vellum looks really sharp as well, like that. And then you could add the white in the middle. There's just so many like different ways of working with this die set. And I really wanted to show you guys just because um, it is almost sold out. And I had so many samples with it. But you could even like die cut, which I didn't grab. You could die cut it all the way, like having this shape die cut in the center. But anyway, just wanted to show that off. Now I've made a huge mess out of everything. Um, and last thing I wanted to mention, we have our card class coming up. So February 21st is our in-house card class. We're making this adorable little snow day card. You get everything you need to create this other than like the uh, coloring material and some glue and tape and that stuff. But um, they are so adorable. You get two different die sets and the papers. Um, and then the virtual card class. So that is going to be virtual. It's at 1 p.m. on February 28th. Um, but it is posted immediately after the class is done. So you can hop on and watch it if you can't watch live or watch live and rewatch as many times as you want. Anyway, it is just called a snow day card class. Yeah, just snow day. <laughs> so if anyone is wanting to purchase the kit still, it is on the website and available um, to order. All right, that was longer than I thought. <laughs> I hope you guys had fun. I know I wasn't here last Friday because I was moving. The move went great and I've been having fun. Um, anyways, I will be here Friday again. Um, I don't foresee, I don't have any time off and like coming up. So I'll be here again every Friday and every Tuesday at 12 o'clock. Um, so if you guys can't, watch me live again. These always are posted afterwards. You can rewatch them then. So I'll see you guys Friday. Again, don't know what I'm doing, but it's going to be fun. <laughs> so I'll see you guys then. Take care, everyone. Have a good rest of your week until I see you Friday. Bye.